Another thing that I don't talk a whole lot about is like that dynamic of heel disconnection. I don't believe that heel disconnection is actually what people think heel disconnection is. Um, but in this particular case, you can see as soon as you go to enter that drive phase, there is sense of a, a heel disconnection here, right? You can see that kind of foot shifts. And now what we have is this instability issue of, of maybe the foot, the ankle, or instability of the drive leg. Now what it does is it takes your direction, and I know the camera angle is a little bit off, but it's gonna take your direction now, so your drive leg is gonna dictate your body's direction, right? And we wanna go as linear as possible. It's not always gonna work out that way because we're super rotational when we throw. But what's gonna happen now is this drive leg is gonna crack and it's gonna take your direction this way. So the body being extremely smart and like adaptable to every sense of input that it receives is now gonna force your lower half to rotate super early and pretty aggressive to where now your front foot comes down and it's facing over here. So now it, you see how that works. It's kind of like a little, little uh, seesaw compensation type thing. Whereas like you lift and you start to leak that way forward. And then your body's like, well, wait, we got to pull back. So then you can fall susceptible to this kind of early, you know, contralateral tilt pull to make way for, you know, your arm coming through and also your direction. Now, after that's completed, then you can see your body's energy after the throw is going to go back to arm side. So when I look at direction, it's always about like, okay, understanding the foundation of the athlete, like how you want to move, but then it's also about understanding like what is optimal and what is not optimal, right? What are we leaking here? What are we leaving on the table as a byproduct of this? Well, the direction itself, since you are kind of fighting some linear slash, you know, over rotational stuff, you're limiting yourself to as much power, um, a little bit of power output there. And then the early kind of pelvis rotation here, how you kind of see with that front foot, like it's that full rotation here and you got three more frames until you're fully anchored down. So that's another leaking of, of potential, you know, rotational energy. Um, and then, like I said, with that drive leg, so trust me, man, I, I know it's frustrating in terms of this drive leg stuff because I'm one myself, uh, that can fall into this pattern very simply. And it's just about, you know, holding yourself accountable to doing the right progression. So um, hopefully that piece made sense. I'll show you here a quick little screening. Uh, Max Freed, as you mentioned in your PDF, the stability, right? So as soon as he comes down, loads that drive leg, you can see he's got this sense of stability here. The three points of ankle in line with knee, knee, boom, hip, stable, pelvis locked in, front foot closed, hands out. Now we're rocking and now everything's going to go on time. His drive leg is going to come down and that's basically hip, hips rotating when the hand comes up and then you rotate into front foot strike and then you posture and you position yourself accordingly uh, when you anchor down, right? Obviously, perfect world scenario, Freed's an all-star. We just, you know, <laughs> it's not, not easy, man. But all right, dudes, Robbie Rowe here. Thank you for watching that video. If you're interested in booking your own mechanical analysis, you can click that link right there. Also tell you a little bit about the service and what it entails. Hit that link right there. Subscribe, please. You can also check out that video right there, which is related to the video that you just watched if you want to get some more context on that. All right, guys. Much love. God bless. Till next time. See ya. Strike three. You're out.